This is Jeb Boone with ESFI, and I'm here with CLG's EU Yellow Pete. Yellow Pete, how's it going? It's going good, thanks. Um, after this long streak of lands, uh, you've had a lot of chances to sort of delve into the strengths and weaknesses of your team, maybe more so than you have before. So, what do you think some of those strengths and weaknesses are, and how do you how are you going to go on and improve those things? Um, I feel like we're sometimes in our coordination we're a little bit too scared still. We sometimes don't uh re exploit advantages that we might be able to exploit, especially in like early mid game stage of the game. Uh during late game we're usually doing pretty well and we have like our strategies ironed out for that, but um yeah, but there's still a lot to do in terms of coordination in the other levels. And how has training been at the CLG house? Are you getting good practice against double lift and things like that? Uh yeah, I've actually practiced quite a lot against CLG and A so Double lift is yes, the AD carry player that I've played most against overall. Okay. And yeah, it's been good practice for sure. Like that. Uh, Nunu and Caitlyn are both very st a strong uh, bot lane combo. What do you think is the best way to counter it? The best way to counter it, mm, I feel. Caitlyn always has a distinct lane advantage over other AD carries most of the time because of the range. Um, but you can work around it, for example, if you swap up lanes, she doesn't really have that high harass potential um, towards like common tanky top lane champions. Um, and you might be able to get an advantage that way, just to skip the early levels kind of, and then go into team fights straight away before she gets you know, her strong point, which is at like three or four items. Uh, because she really needs those items, like she's not that strong uh, naturally, her her, her uh, spells don't really have that high of a damage output naturally compared to other champions. She really needs those items, and if you manage to force the objectives early, get map presence, like uh, then I think you can kind of counter it. It's on lane. It's not it's not really that easy to counter. So there's no specific champion you'd use it. Um, if I was to choose a champion, I would probably go for Draven because he can close the gap relatively quickly uh, with his move speed and trade somewhat efficiently and also dodge her Q. So mm -hmm. like if you if you just trade with Q all the time, uh, only eating auto attacks, then you'll you'll be off pretty pretty good against uh, Caitlyn and you also scale comparably. Um, it seems like Fnatic has found its place among other powerhouses, especially after what they've done at this tournament. What are your thoughts on the outcome of IPL5 so far? Do you have any advice for Fnatic or other newer teams who have struggled a bit? Um, I mean, they've, they've has a, had a roster change too, but I, I don't really even know where it came from. I think they just practiced a whole lot. We weren't mm -hmm. in Europe, so we, we couldn't really uh, like, uh, see their, their progress in that. Um, but yeah, I think it's definitely very good that we have stronger EU teams again, um, that the scene has kind of balanced out a little bit, that like not Asia is not super dominant right. uh, anymore. Well, well, they're still dominant, like no, no questions asked. But um, yeah, and as for teams that you know are, are looking to get better, it's always important to play play teams that are better than you to actually learn and talk a lot. Just communication is is a big key. There's been a resurgence away of for AD carries to move away from the big the big three of Graves, Ezreal, and Corky. Uh, what do you? Th why do you think this shift is starting to occur? And who do you view as the strongest AD carry right now? Um, the shift s has a little bit to do with the nerfs that's been uh, placed on the three those three carries, um, but also that teams are. I feel they're focusing a little bit more on dragging out the game and uh, having a strong late game, and that's the situation where. Um, like strong hyper carries such as Vayne or Kogma or even Tristana start to shine. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a different philosophy where you you don't really you're just waiting out the early game, kind of trying to stall it and then come back with superior picks for the late game. Um, yeah. <laughs> Do you think that once <clears throat> that ADCs will go through another shift when these re season three comes around and all the patches and everything have been instituted? There's so many changes coming in for season three that I can not imagine it would not have an impact on how AD carries are played and which AD carries are played. 
Uh, game two against World Elite, as some people are saying, is one of the best games ever played already. Uh, I'm sure you've heard. What was the team's mindset by the time the game hit the 55-minute mark? And you guys have held off, uh, you know, having held off World Elite aggression for the millionth time. What were you guys thinking? Um, it was mostly just about keeping the towers alive, <laughs> kind of. Like, the, the most annoying thing was obviously Rengar with the stealth and backdoor capabilities. So, which we always had to watch out for. Even if we killed like two or three members of the team, we would always have to defend our base regardless. And we couldn't, uh, we couldn't get a lot of objectives out of out of those uh, team fights that we won. So yeah, but we also, on on one or two occasions, we misplayed it while we had a huge advantage. So it's. Like it really could have gone either way. Like the entire game was, was super. Do so you think you could still call it a moral victory, even though you guys lost? Um. Well, I don't know. I wouldn't call it loss a victory. Really, okay. <laughs> it was a fun game, but <laughs> you know, in the end, they won. They played better. Yesterday, in your second game against Taipei Assassins, you started out with a great early advantage, but ended up losing due to an extremely farm-fed Caitlyn. Uh, how do you feel? when you notice that TPA were still in the game and making an obvious comeback? What's what's the sort of thing that has to happen at that point for the team? Um, I think some of our problems in that case was that we were getting pushed on all the lanes pretty hard and we didn't have the strongest wave clear or lane presence at that because just because they had strong laners, like Nidalee is a very strong laner, Caitlyn is a very strong pusher uh, up from a certain point. So we had trouble getting our attention actually from the lanes, letting letting Snoopy, for example, clear uh, wards more, but he was locked up on the lanes a lot because they were you know, just getting pushed. And we didn't get much out of that, so they came back with a pretty huge farm advantage eventually. And yeah, there wasn't there wasn't too much for us to do, really. I, like, we so might you think you handled it fairly well as a team overall? N no, no, you, you can't really call that handling mm -hmm. it fairly well. If, I mean, we were ahead and we should have been able to seal the deal at some point um yeah but I, i'm like looking at it from this perspective i'm not entirely sure what we should have done at, at uh it's just one of those games point. yeah yeah uh various members of clg were talking about how sick and tired everyone was because the way the tournament was scheduled uh or was everyone just out having a lot of fun in las vegas i mean what was all that about i personally didn't have a problem with the schedule i mean there's just so many games there's hardly any way to like schedule them any differently i guess um okay for us it was also a bit easier since we didn't have to play on the second day That's like true. we won all the matches on the first day so we had a free day and yeah but like i wasn't i wasn't really tired due to the schedule ever <laughs> was so clg's performance yesterday do you think it was um influenced more by just a different uh, divergence in play styles or were people just really tired or you're talking about ours or yeah. CLG and Okay. Um, no, I don't think we can blame any other things than just our our actual play. Like, there was no no real outside factors that influenced that a lot. Uh, you, what you guys have shown is that you can definitely put on some really great early game aggression this weekend uh, with Frog and playing Lux a couple times. Is this something we can expect to see more of or is it just something that isn't usually practiced and sometimes it works? Um, we do try to practice it. It's always dependent on what actually happens during the early game. Like level one strategies are always kind of a rock paper scissors thing. So mm -hmm. you cannot expect in every single case to come out ahead and actually be able to press the advantage. But uh, I personally like the early game aggression style a lot because it puts a lot of pressure on the enemy. Kind of like they they're just not free to do whatever they want to do. So like whenever possible I would I would want to to apply that as a team and I would also want to try and practice as a team to get into that situation. Well now that we're about to have a bit major break in the land style tournaments uh what what plans do you have as a team as far as practice ex is concerned and also what do you think of the new patch and how is that going to affect the team as well? Um we're going to go back to Europe right after IPL and um like practice from home basically. Um, and then going into season three of the new patches, that's, well, everyone kind of individually has to figure out like all the things by himself first, like the items and uh, what possible 
builds and stuff for for their own champions uh, will be available but i expect us to go, get through that phase pretty quickly with just with how much we're playing so um yeah and then going into season three we're gonna probably move together move together in a gaming house right. and yeah great there. well thanks very much for the interview feel free to say anything you'd like any uh words uh, i'd like to thank all our sponsors which are uh, on tv razor xmg and needle buff and i would also like to thank all the fans that are supporting us and that are coming to events cheering for us um that's huge motivation really thank you great best of luck in season three thanks again thanks <laughs>